Sometimes you want another GPU for whatever reason. Maybe you don't have a GPU, or you'd rather not hear your fans all the time. You want your local machine to run a local coding model, but need access to a different model for other tasks as well. Maybe you're streaming with OBS and don't want things to, to lag. You're running different agents and you want them to respond together faster. There's probably an infinite number of reasons to need more GPUs. So let's search for a solution. We need a cloud provider that has access to virtual machines with GPUs, not just shared GPUs that have generic names where you don't really know what's there, like on Azure, but to know that it's an NVIDIA card for which a CUDA driver actually exists. Now, I have friends who love Paperspace for doing this, which is now owned by DigitalOcean. Paperspace is pretty awesome, but apart from the fact that I seem to have to make quota requests every freaking time I start a machine. They get approved 20 minutes later, but it's always a pain. On the plus side, they are pretty much the only reliable source of Windows-based instances with GPU that I've been able to find. Now, I don't use a lot of Windows, but I did for this channel recently. I know others who adore fly.io, but I felt it was a bit awkward to use. I spent a while with the docs and I just couldn't figure it out. I've tried using services like Lambda Labs or GCP, but I always ran into issues getting access to a GPU. And I wouldn't know there was a problem for sometimes as long as five minutes. Eventually you see a red exclamation point in the console saying, no more GPUs in that region. Try again tomorrow. Try again. And then you try a different region and hope for the best. Why can't they just tell you where GPUs exist? I have no idea. Well, that's what I find to be really amazing about Brev. They make it super easy to find a GPU somewhere on the planet with a few different providers. Usually a fraction of a second of latency doesn't really make a difference for this use case. So if the machine's in Singapore or anywhere else where it's late at night, doesn't really matter to me. And you pay them rather than signing up for AWS and GCP or others. Though if you do have an account on those platforms, you can integrate it accordingly. Now, you might be thinking that this is going to be very expensive. Sure, maybe if you needed the machines to be running 24 hours a day, but how long do you use models on any given day? Two, maybe three hours, uh, five days a week? So you could do that for about six, seven bucks a month. I think that's pretty reasonable. And the instances are up and running within a minute or so. Let's check out how this works. I'll log into my brev.dev account and click the new instance button. So which GPU do I want? I tend to go for a T4. It's cheap and it's pretty fast. Often 40 something tokens per second, a lot of the time. Pricing changes depending on what's available, but I'll often choose spot pricing to drop that lower. And here's what it costs when recording this video. The price seems to move around a little bit depending on, I, I don't know what it depends on. I can give it more or less disk and then set a name. Let's call this one Remote Olama and click deploy. So far in my experience, the machine is up and running in about a minute, maybe a little bit less. Then Olama takes another four seconds to install because all the GPU drivers are already there. You know, often on GCP, when I do get an instance, even if specifying a machine learning optimized instance, I'm waiting for five minutes or more just to install the CUDA drivers. And then pulling and running Llama 2 or Gemma or another model is another 20 seconds. So that's pretty quick. So fully up and running in about a minute and a half. Did you notice how I logged in? Normally with most cloud providers, you'd have to give it an SSH key at the beginning or download one to connect or download some other file to connect. But with Brev, you don't deal with any of those things. You install one command when you set up your account called Brev. I can type Brev shell dash dash host remote Olama, and I'm SSH into the host. Perhaps even cooler is I can type Brev open 
dash dash host, remote olama, and VS Code opens with everything set up to work against that remote machine. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. But I would like to be able to just run olama and have my olama client access the remote machine. So there are a few steps to getting that working. We need to tell the client machine where the olama service is running. We need to tell the olama server that we should accept requests from other machines. And we need to enable remote machines to access the Brev server. That last option can be the easiest and it can be the hardest. On some platforms, you might just grant all access to all visitors. And that is super dangerous and that's a stupid. probably just stupid because there are search engines out there that make it easy to find open ports all over the world. I tried it once about four months ago and found dozens and dozens of Alamo servers wide open. Don't do that. It's amazing how much free compute you can get if you, one, try, and two, don't have no morals. Rev doesn't allow you to just open things up anyway. They offer you the ability to open up a service in their UI that you can share with folks, and then you use Brev to authenticate and get access to the service. If you'd like to see that, I can cover it in a future video. But the approach I like to take is to use Tailscale. Tailscale is like really secure VPN done really, really simply. It is amazing how quickly you can be up and running. And for three users, even with a custom domain, it's free with a hundred devices. I don't know about you, but I don't have a hundred devices. Beyond that, it's like six bucks per active user per month. Now you would think based on this, I was getting some sort of kickback from Tailscale, but it's just a really cool service. Now I'm not gonna show setting up Tailscale from the beginning, but I can if you want, just ask for that below. Remember my goal here, I wanna add remote Olama to my Tailscale network. So I'll choose add device in Tailscale and choose Linux. Here's a shell script to run, copy that. Now run brev shell dash dash host remote Olama and paste the command. Then on the remote host, run sudo Tailscale up. It gives me a URL to open and that will log the machine into my network. Depending on the provider actually running this host, the name and tail scale may be different. I'll rename it to Remote Olama. We're almost there. Now, on Remote Olama, we need to add an environment variable to tell the Olama service to take requests from remote machines. So we need to set Olama underscore host to 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. Yeah. The right way to do this is to run sudo systemctl edit olama.service. The first time we do this, we get a blank file. Add service at the top, then environment equals olama underscore host equals 0.0.0.0. .0 That's a little strange. The second equal sign is inside the double quotes. Save that out and then sudo systemctl daemon reload and then sudo systemctl restart olama to restart the service. Okay, we're in the final stretch. When you set up Tailscale, you get this cool icon in the menu bar on the Mac. I assume there's something similar in your Windows task tray or in some Linux command. You should see remote Olama listed there. So in the terminal on your local machine, run Olama underscore host equals remote Olama, Olama run Llama2. And boom, you are in and running Llama2 on Olama on a machine somewhere in the world. And it just works. When it's time to stop the instance, visit brev.dev and click the delete button. Now you might wonder why I put the environment variable on the line when running the Olama client. Well, maybe I'm running Olama on this machine for help with coding. If I set the environment variable the right way for the service, it'll screw up the service. I just want this to take effect for the CLI client and let VS Code and the local service continue to work fine. So. What else can you do now that you have Olama running with Tailscale? Well, maybe you want a web UI that you can run from your phone. That'll just work. And maybe you do that with your regular machine instead of a hosted server. Maybe a friend has a super powerful machine that you share access to, and that becomes your Olama server that you both use. Usually if setting up remote networking was easy, you probably did it wrong but Tailscale makes this and so many other situations super easy and you did it right. 
And that's why I like Brev. It makes something hard super easy. I guess that's why I like Olama so much. It makes something that's pretty hard super easy. Now, I want to go back to something I showed earlier on. The command to open a shell to a Brev instance was Brev shell dash dash host remote Olama. If you leave off the dash dash host, it'll log into something else and it may take a while longer before it works. What we're doing with Brev isn't actually their main product. Their main thing is making backend instances for your Colab notebooks. They want you to have access to super fast and powerful machines for working with Jupyter. So when you start up a new instance, it spends a while getting a new container good to go so that you can then drop into a new or existing notebook. This is a world I haven't really gotten into, but they have some amazing resources on the brev.dev website for learning all sorts of AI and machine learning and other topics using their notebooks and instances. You really have to check out this video by Harper Carroll, where she goes through fine tuning based on her journals. It's amazing. And that's what I have for you for this time. Let me know if you have any more questions. I'm watching all the comments all the time and love to hear what you have to say. Thanks so much for being here. Goodbye.